have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really cool video with the Vampire 2 now, and forgive me this regard, this is a different map, but I'm using the map Warrior's Path and uh, Vampire 2 now, uh, one of my other favorite destroyers with the Druid, and uh, let's take a look at how it goes. Before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support at 2000 subs, doing free premium DD giveaway. And we're doing more of these tactical corner uh, videos with Warrior's Path and other maps uh, for clan battles or even random. So let's take a look at this map right now. Warrior's Path. Not my favorite. Every time I see this map, I cringe because why? It's so difficult because all these islands are just tempting you to kind of sneak in and out giving very different angles, odd angles, but it also, it's very, very large because why it's a long truck to get to these flanks. And it's all about flanking and maneuvering ships to get to the enemy's uh, broadsides or flanks or crossfires. And moving out to these flanks requires a fast destroyer. Unfortunately, we're not in a Marceau Clabert today. We're in a vampire and you know, the vampire and druids are very, very slow. In my personal opinion, average speed is about 36 to 37 knots, while you got Kleber and Marceau and topping out at 55 knots. So you definitely need one of those. But let's take a look at how this actually works. The biggest thing is the flanks. Like You want to acquire these flanks in order to achieve some kind of a surprise. However, at the cost of losing potentially either center pushes or middles, or you have to reposition, or you're too far spread out, and that could affect you in the long run. So what did we do with this one? Um, the idea was basically to do an even split where we have three ships go to Bravo and then we have four ships go to Alpha to overwhelm and contest. That's the idea and the basic goal. So how did we actually position these ships to do that? Well, uh, we took one of the destroyers obviously did Bravo to, to cap and we're going to have one a radar cruiser here and uh, another radar cruiser potentially there or maybe a Conde. I think this is the, the map makeup and have them kind of hold at Bravo and see where the enemy develops. Again, it's not about always pushing aggressively at the bat, right off the bat. You have to actually know where the enemy's at to make an, a more educated decision to react, right? So as a vampire, we're over here at the uh, Alpha Cap. We're going to take a, uh, a cruiser with us in support, and please disregard these. This is from another map. I, I didn't take a screenshot of the uh, the actual map itself. The Also, the crucial aspects of this is taking the flank. You don't want to have any kind of torpedo or gunboat flank you right here, so... Having either a radar cruiser and a battleship going out into the west helps kind of allows you to stay at a distance, getting a good standoff range, providing firepower support. Rather than I've seen most teams, they sit back here at these islands, and then that doesn't give you any kind of good shots right there, right? But if you're over here at the west, you potentially have a radar coverage and you can shoot into alpha, but also shooting into support anybody in this area right here that could potentially flank or disrupt you right there as always. So as a uh, vampire player, we're definitely going to sit here, try to cap alpha. We've got good concealment we got the crawling smoke we can definitely go in and uh, contest and see if we can hold and capture alpha and meanwhile we have a radar cruiser in support to radar anybody that threatens us right here what i think the enemy team is going to do is the enemy team typically will send a larger force to alpha again same idea they're going to try to cover the flanks to have a battleship in support while the other two uh cruisers right here will take charlie and support that's a very basic split setup Again, how you're going to see the map play actually end up as a destroyer player, we're going to need to make sure that we cover uh, the, not only Alpha, but also be able to react and push back to Bravo because what you're going to probably see is they're going to over outflank us and take Bravo, and the enemy team will actually overwhelm Bravo and push up through the middle here, and we lose our uh, their two cruisers, and maybe our destroyer comes back and supports us. Uh, meanwhile, our, our friendlies will then continue pushing aggressively into the uh, spawn area and try to out flank and outmaneuver our enemy team again why do i not like doing that because one you're so far away that you have to drive back in to get in any fight meanwhile the enemy team takes over bravo and charlie and again that's a difficult push to push back into because if you push back into the center you're, you're subjecting yourself to not only enemy flanking fire from the north from bravo from the center and also at potentially at charlie so it's very very scary and very difficult to actually do this kind of a maneuver unless you have superior firepower and you can go fast. Um, what you're actually going to see how this plays out is a vampire being the slow as it is, it's able to actually 
not only are we going to go in and cap alpha, but we're going to be able to maneuver and then respot some of the ships that we lost uh, vision of at Bravo and Charlie, but also go in and return back to Bravo and cover it as well. Again, as a good destroyer player, you want to be able to react to the ever-developing battlefield because you never know what's going to happen. You want to react quickly and swiftly, also bringing enough firepower to the game because, like I said, Druid and Vampire are one of the best... Um, I would say research bureau ships out there that you can get because it provides not only good spotting as a destroyer player, but good firepower to bring to bear when the, the battlefield starts reshaping against you. So let's take a look at the video and see how it goes. All right, we're in the Vampire 2, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, again, one of my favorite destroyers, just like with the Druid, kind of like that British-style AP uh, firepower, but the Vampire's a little bit different, extra set of guns, but got its set of torpedoes that go up to 12, less than a daring, one rack only. But it's got the guns that's really, really awesome, and I think that's why I enjoy it so much. The fast reload, the great uh, use of HE in a combination of one of the best APs in the game. AP shell damage for a destroyer is really awesome, and the British-style kind of like destroyer line, like the daring, the Vampire, and the Druid, I really, really enjoy that aspect. I think it makes the, the shore roll very, very uh, comfortable, very effective, and very useful. So we're going to see what we do right here. The torpedoes launch out there, 12 kilometer range, going out there and reaching and touching somebody. And we're going to go ahead and use the Vampire 2's fire ability. Uh, starts really, really good fires. Now, I've been testing this out, shooting at long range to see if this allows me to get any kind of damage. But, man, these guys in clan battles, I noticed, have very good accuracy. Everybody's got good aim. So it's not like playing on randoms anymore. You're playing with people that really know what they're doing and know how to aim and shoot. Uh, so we're going to have to go ahead and pop our exhaust smoke right here, or crawling smoke, that is. Crawling smoke means at quarter speed, I can go stay undetected as long as I'm not being radared or hydro. Oh, we get that nice torpedo hit right there. And we're just going to have to disengage. Again, being a good destroyer player knows that when you can pick a fight and when you can win it and when you can run away. Uh, not only just being able to shoot, but also being able to retreat is a good aspect of being a good destroyer player and when it, knowing when to utilize and pick your battles. Uh, launching more torpedoes right there. We're going to go ahead and go in and run into the cap. Now, the downside about the Vampire 2 is as if I'm full speed, they can see the smoke from a mile away moving. So they're like, okay, I know where he's at now. So very, very deadly uh, combination and... Um, uh, a very, I guess, disadvantage of the crawling smoke generator because you can't get rid of it, you can't turn it off, it's always there and you're spotted. Go ahead and we go ahead and cap Alpha. You can see as our team pushed over to Bravo, we lost one of our cruisers. And our Conde has to hold off that advance right there because they got a Marceau. He's able to run out to the flanks very quick. That's the advantage of having a fast destroyer going out there and taking out those flanks. We lose our two cruisers at Bravo, and now we have to run back. And like I said, you have to be able to know when to readjust and uh, uh, accordingly to the battlefield developing right in front of your eyes. Our Alpha push is great. The three cruiser, the two cruisers in Battleship will take it on. Now we're going to go ahead and take a full health Kremlin right here. Let's see if we can get as much damage down as possible. And this is the effectiveness of what a good destroyer team can do. If you have a good torpedo boat and a good gunboat, you can use the combination of the two to really take down a monster like the Kremlin. We go ahead and try to start at least, you see the fire ability of the Vampire is so phenomenal, fantastic. The reload rate down this thing is 1.7 with three sets of guns, starting a really good fire chance. Very, very effective. Great DPM from the Vampire, one of the top uh, destroyer from the DPM department. That is why I like it so much. Great torpedo shots right there from the Summers. We're going to go to use that as our take advantage of this ability to take down a monster's health right off the bat. Knowing that I could not take down his health by myself, I'm going to keep firing and try to see if I can start another fire. He probably damaged con right there. Yep, he damaged con. So now we're going to go ahead. His, it's on cooldown now. Let's see if we can start another perma fire. We're going to see if we can go ahead and shoot the main super shark. He's going to fire at us right now. We're going to juke the throttle a little bit right there, knowing how to jump dodge shells is very good it throws off their shots and wastes a shot from a battleship which could have been devastating to one of our cruisers or battleships you want to be that big distraction right now right now you think we're probably a big distraction right now his guns are still facing us he is saving his shot for us rather than our friendlies we are going to see keep shooting that super structure we are just melting him here we started about 50,000 health and he we have our 50,000 damage now we're up to the 81 80 something so we put at least about 30 to 40,000 damage right there and we get the kill we get the kill splash one for us right there taking down the kremlin and we did our part as a destroyer player holding off that advance right now we got a petro pushing into the middle notice he has a 12 kilometer radar we were within that radar but unfortunately it is a short burst so we're going to make sure that we run away and are not in a line of sight with him 
and we're going to go help our Summers. We're talking with our Summers right now, going, we need to work together to take on a Marceau because I think a Marceau would be literally at a disadvantage going up against a uh, Marceau. Oh, sorry, Summers is a disadvantage going up against a Marceau. We want to make sure we have a two-to-one advantage there. Our Alpha team is holding strong right now, trying to fend off an attack from the Napoli Gdansk as well as their Nova Brisk and a Petro bearing down on them right now. Let's see if they can hold off while we go back and retake this Bravo cap. And hopefully we can make a comeback coming back from a 200 point deficit and seeing if we can take out at least one of their destroyers to give ourselves an advantage. We spot the Petro out there. He is not a factor for us. We're going to see when you just get a free torpedo right here. Hopefully he runs right into one. And again, that's an advantage of the Vampire 2. Having these 12-kilometer torpedoes, unfortunately only one rack. Okay, now we spot the Marceau. Going ahead and trying to help out our Summers as best we can. We switch to AP because I know he's going to turn broadside to us at, at some point. And the AP on the Vampire is just as deadly as a, a Druid or a Daring. Pretty awesome right there. Very effective. Just look at the HP. We're going to melt off him right here. Taking great damage. His saturation is not going to help him. And he takes a torpedo. Cannot sustain that pincer move a maneuver with the two destroyers. Daring and Summing working together. I'm sorry, Vampire and Summers working together. And that was really awesome tactics right there. Good communication on our part. Now we're going to go ahead and try to start a fire on the uh, Petro. And seeing a, any kind of damage we can get, it will help our team in the long run. Like I've always said, any kind of damage you do right now will pay you in dividends in the long run. If you have, it has to come down to the wire. Notice the fire chance is really, really incredible on the Vampire too. Again, another fire right there. Getting four fires told in this game. See if we can get another one on the Super Shark. There's a second one right there. Again, Vampire 2, just a fire starter. Pretty incredible. He's going to go ahead and push forward. And we're, he's going to be outside of our range. Notice these shells are very, very floaty. Very difficult to work with sometimes. They're more, they're much better at closer ranges against destroyers in battleships. But man, when you got a fast um, uh, cruiser like a Petro, it's very difficult. Get another fire right there. Three fires right there in the last you know minute right there, getting him down to as much damage as we can. Unfortunately, uh, I think we do a drive on. He misses. Did he get that kill? I think he does. Vincent gets that nice shot. Very go, very good right there. And we get a three to two. Now we are coming back, and we got to take on the Gdansk ourselves. Calling in for the Summers for full support. We got to use as much of our health as we can. Notice the Gdansk is at twenty four thousand health. Look what we can do with the AP right here. Nose in, slim profile right here. Mitigate as much damage as we can. This is almost like Druid style gameplay. Player, front two guns firing AP taking so much damage look at that all the damage we take about 20,000 HP off this guy and any kind of uh, damage we can do to help the summers and he takes him down for us and we get the final victory lap right there and a good comeback 129,000 damage with the support of the summers two DDs working together to eliminate and win the game right now. Vampire 2, definitely worth it. Check it out. Take a look at the build at the very end of the screen right there. That is Warriors Power with the Vampire 2. Hope you guys are doing well. Let me know in the comments below. And like, subscribe, bell button below. I appreciate all the support. And as always, thank you. Say hi out there when you see me. And as always, stay safe. Cheers.